The author of the new book, Not for the Faint of Heart, Lessons in Courage, Power and Persistence. And Lisa, I want to go to you on this point of uh, Justice Stevens today. I, I am not aware uh, of any former Supreme Court justice taking a public position in opposition to the nomination of a Supreme Court justice. If it happened, it happened somewhere in a distant history that I'm not aware of. I'm not aware of it either, and I think uh, Justice Stevens um, has talked about in his writings as a, as a judge and beyond about the really crucial role of the Supreme Court as an impartial uh, tribunal for the rule of law in this country, and for him to call out um, Judge Kavanaugh is really significant. And as you point out, Lawrence, the fact is that these were his prepared remarks. Uh, these were premeditated. These were baseless, really baseless charges of partisanship that were intended to erase the testimony of Dr. Ford um, and to, su to suggest that his anger um, was somehow evidence of his innocence. Um, and he also has made this sort of uh, crocodile tears claim that he was constrained to not speak. Clearly, he can speak whenever he wishes, and he chooses to speak almost entirely through right-wing um, media outlets, whether it's Fox News or The Wall Street Journal. That's how he chooses to speak, because that's who he is. And when he says that he's going to be the man he's been for 28 years as a, as a lawyer, 16 of those years were as a right-wing political operative before he became a judge. What we saw last week was the mask falling and him revealing who he really is, and in fact, I think who he would be on the court, and that's a stain on that court if he is confirmed. Uh, Wendy Sherman, you've been through the confirmation process as an Undersecretary of State. You know that demeanor is a huge component of what you're doing in that room. People have to know that they're going to feel confident in trusting you in a role like Undersecretary of State where you're going to be and were in the uh, negotiations with Iran over their nuclear program. Uh, you're going to have to be trusted with secrets, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, competence, knowledge, but demeanor is everything. Demeanor is everything. I mean, how do you lose sight of that? How can the moment come in a confirmation hearing where, where you lose your grip on what you know they want to see? Indeed, I think that uh, Kavanaugh thinks that his righteous indignation shows that he is sure. innocent. And I think his righteous oh, okay, indignation it. shows that he's trying to divide us and them to say that Christine Blasey Ford is something else than a real human being, and he's the person who has standing. It is, quite frankly, often a very male approach to power, mm -hmm. uh, that righteous indignation, and the president has tried to use that to completely push us apart. We aren't apart. We all care about our sons. We all care about our daughters. But what is so critical and what wasn't heard in the time of Anita Hill and hasn't been heard this time either, I'm sorry to say, is the pain, the suffering, and what and the humiliation that Christine Blasey Ford has had to live with all of her life. Justice Stevens made an important distinction uh, between uh, Clarence Thomas and uh, Brett Kavanaugh today. Uh, let's listen to that. There's nothing that Clarence did in the hearings that disqualified him from, from, sit, from sitting in cases after he came on the court. He's a very, very uh, decent, likable person, and you cannot help but like uh, uh, Clarence Thomas, which I don't think necessarily would be the, true of, uh, of this particular well. nominee. <laughs> Mimi, uh, we all remember Clarence Thomas in the hearing. We all knew that he was angry, and we also knew that he was containing his anger to some degree. And if he, if he felt falsely accused, the anger, of course, is understandable. Uh, but what he never did do was raise any kind of political reference to, to any, anything that the Democrats were doing in that hearing. Right, and, and that's the difference that Justice Stevens is talking about. And he referenced, I think, um, Professor Tribe's article that he had written about why he believes uh, 
uh, Brett Kavanaugh, you know, is sort of disqualified, cannot sit properly on the court now. And it's because he was so partisan that how can so there are so many cases that will be before him mm -hmm. that have as their parties in the case a political nature or political affiliation. How could anyone who is not uh, affiliated now with a conservative bent or, or a Republican, uh, the Republican Party think that they're going to get a fair shot in front of him? And the very definition of a judge of justice is people actually having a fair shot and actually believing that, right? We, we need people to have faith in our judicial institutions. And the only way to do that is if people think that the judge is going to be objective and look at the facts and not rule from emotion. And that's what Brett Kavanaugh showed himself really incapable of doing. He's, he's all emotion. And justified or not, you can't do that as a judge. And, and Lisa, it seems the op-ed piece tonight is almost a, a rushed answer to Justice Stevens today. Certainly, they none of us uh, saw this coming from Justice Stevens. This was actually a long scheduled minor event in Florida, kind of a neighborhood event uh, near where he lives, uh, where he was scheduled to speak uh, because a friend in invited him to, uh, but uh, the person interviewing him said it felt very deliberate that Justice Stevens wanted, uh, right off the bat in that interview, which I watched in its entirety, wanted to get out there and make this statement, and it seems uh, the White House realized there's got to be a response to this. It certainly does seem like a scramble to get this out and to use Wall Street Journal as a vehicle uh, to do it. And also, um, it's the case that Judge Kavanaugh is facing virtually unprecedented opposition by law professors from all backgrounds, right, left, and middle, because of his temperament, because of his behavior um, at the hearing last week, uh, over a week ago. And I think that what you see now is a nominee who uh, has, in essence, besmirched himself through his actions, and that's even setting aside the record of him lying under oath uh, in his previous hearings about other serious matters. And so uh, by any objective measure, this nomination would be in serious trouble. Unfortunately, we're in this time of tremendous partisanship where people aren't being heard uh, and even witnesses aren't being interviewed by the FBI as part of what should have been a really thorough investigation. And uh, Wendy, uh, Heidi Heitkamp today, Senator Heitkamp, actually cited Brett Kavanaugh's performance and conduct in the hearing as part of her reason. It's a two-part reason. One is she believes Dr. Ford, but she said her, Dr. Ford's credibility was actually, in her view, enhanced by Brett Kavanaugh's conduct. So it's actually a joined element. And as the White House lost a very important vote today that included Brett Kavanaugh's conduct as part of the reason, uh, this must be p why they've decided we really do have to respond to it. Yeah, it's really quite extraordinary. The Wall Street Journal article, uh, this being raised by other opinion leaders, uh, McConnell coming out as hard as he possibly can in support of Kavanaugh, really trying to say this is a fait accompli. But you know, Lawrence, the very fact they did this Wall Street Journal article means they're nervous, mm -hmm. that they're not sure they've got the votes. Uh, so we'll see what tomorrow brings. Lisa Graves, Mimi Rocha, Wendy Sherman, thank you for starting our discussion tonight. Today's profile in courage in the United States Senate. That's coming up. A look at Senator Heidi Heitkamp's decision to cast a vote against Brett Kavanaugh, which could end her Senate career.